she will always be Canada's snowbird, the girl next door who sang her way to international stardom. It all looked so easy, but as her new book reveals, it was nothing like that. This week, she tells us all about it. And hello, I'm Peter Mansbridge, one-on-one -on -one this week with Anne Murray, who now adds author to her pretty impressive resume, along with Michael Posner for All of Me. Congratulations on that. Thank you. It really is all of you. There's yes. a lot of stuff in here. It's pretty uh, revealing about mm. you. And I want to talk about a, a few of those things, but I want to start with, to me, one of the big questions. Is it really true that if you take a drink and stand on your head, you'll, <laughs> you'll get drunk faster? Well, uh, we tried it and it seemed to work. <laughs> now, mind you, in those days, we didn't drink very much at all, and I don't think it would have taken much, but there we were, all lined up in that dorm. And we didn't have, I think we had a little Mickey, and there were four of us. And you were like 17, 18? We, you know? we would have been 18, right? maybe 19, 18 or 19, and uh, we didn't have dates for the winter carnival. And uh, so we got a Mickey, and I don't have no idea where we got it. <laughs> sure, but that's we, just your story now. <laughs> <laughs> but we each took a swig of this rum and stood on our heads, four of us, along the hall. Yeah, <laughs> Quite a sight, quite an image, <laughs> that one. There are a lot of images in here. Yes. And it, uh, I guess it initially leaves you wondering why you wrote it. Like, why did you want to write this book? I felt that um, someone would write a book about me, or I thought they might. And I, if I, a book was going to come out, I would rather that I write it, that it be my story, uh, rather than something somebody made up. So I, I felt it should have my voice. Your voice and, and some of the warts. Yes, absolutely, yeah. What did you want people to come away from, or what do you want them to, when they read this, what, what do you want them to I don't think I really thought about what I wanted people come away with, I think I was thinking more uh, that it might be of interest for people to know what my career was like, wh how difficult it was, um, because people see me as the girl next door, everything came easy, and it was, and that was not the case. It was hard, hard work and a lot of bumps along the way, and uh, even some of my friends don't realize how much work. They think that being on the road is just a big lark. Um, boy. Well, being on the road, as yeah. you tell the stories through this book, mm -hmm. was quite something. I mean, especially through some of those days, the 70s. Yeah, those early days were very tough on the road. Um, I had my band, some of my band members in those early days were <laughs> incorrigible. <laughs> They were bad boys. Well, the drug con culture, yes. you know, sort of comes through in this book in a way that I guess it surpri will surprise a lot of people because, hey, this is Anne Murray. Yes. This is the, you know, girl next door, the yes. virginal, quiet, right. good looking, always nice, never does anything wrong. Yeah. Anne Murray, and here she's going to live sex shows in Sweden. And she's, <laughs> You know, you get... doing the things that all normal <laughs> early twenty people do. Yeah, uh, I I also had um, guys in my band who uh, who abused drugs and alcohol, and uh, it made my life miserable because I I never knew what to expect when I went on stage. Um, I I was living on the edge all the time. And I was sitting in the middle of floors writing checks and booking hotels, and um, I was doing it all in those days. And uh, how I ever managed to get through those first few years is beyond me. I don't well, know. Well, and, and also, I guess, in those early years, it's important to say, and you make the point a couple of times, the kind of, that image that was had of you of the, the wholesome girl yes. next door, and yet you were having an affair with a married man yes, for I was. a considerable length of time before and you girls, ended up girls married. girls next door sometimes do that. Yeah. 
But that was a tough time too because I, I was in love with a man who was married and we had to keep it under wraps for I think it was close to four years. That was, that was not easy to do. But did you feel a, you know, kind of a conflict there between who you were seen to be and who... Peter, I was so in love, nothing mattered. And also, I was so busy. I didn't have time to really... I mean, I didn't even see much of Bill at the time. I was on the road, on the tear, all the time. And so... I, I wasn't. I was too busy to think about my image or any of that. The the, the drug alcohol thing, mm -hmm. which you know, it's not going to come as any to surprise to anybody that no. the, that that culture existed within yes. the music industry. But how did you resist it? Because it would appear in what you say here that you, that you did. You didn't get caught up in that. No, personally. but I saw what it was doing, and it was counterproductive, and I had a job to do. Um, I had to go out on stage and perform to people every single night. Uh, I couldn't get caught up in any of that. And I was in charge of all of this, although you'd never know it because <laughs> nobody paid any attention to me. I mean, I was, I was the youngest one, or practically the youngest one, and nobody listened to me, uh, even though I was writing the checks. Um, it was, uh, <laughs> in hindsight, uh, it, it's still awful. It was horrible then and it's still awful even to think about it. There was the one time where you got a little carried away before a concert. Was it Massey Hall? Massey Hall, yes. It was a friend of mine came up from Nova Scotia and I was I was feeling pretty lonely because I because I had just I had just moved here and I didn't know anybody. And it was very difficult moving from Halifax to Toronto because the big bad city and I was leaving my comfort zone. My friends show up, and we sat, spent the afternoon drinking rum. So I went on stage. I was drunk, and I had two shows to do. And I, the next morning, I got up and read the papers. The reviews were magnificent reviews because I was so relaxed. <laughs> Yeah. But that, you know, that must have worried you. Oh, it scared the living daylights out of me. I never, I never even had a drink after that before a show. But you could Not see to why this some... day. Well, you could see how some would say, well, man, I, I got to do these shows loaded if yeah, they're that it, good. Yeah, but it just scared me too much. Yeah. I was just, uh, I went, oh, no, you can't do that again. Uh-uh. And I didn't. We've got to take our short break. We've got lots more to talk about with Anne Murray, one-on-one, -on -one, when we come back. Ten thousand tears till I dry my eyes A million more is what you're hoping for For isn't love what you hate Peter Mansbridge, one-on-one, -on -one, a new book. What kind of conversation. Ever wondered what happened before the cameras rolled? One of the most impressive countries in the world. Some of the most extraordinary people of our time. 